On today's episode of Uniweb Interview Show, I'm joined by a familiar face, Jennifer Haskins, author, literary consultant, former literary agent, putting up with me trying to be British. <laughs> it's okay, I can do it too. All right, let's have the whole, I feel like British people whisper more. <laughs> do you? Do you? I feel like they're always yelling. know why. <laughs> they're, they're always yelling in your head you must have a crazy british person in your head i have I a very quiet that. one <laughs> jennifer you're thank so... you so much for coming back thank you you're very welcome thanks for having me you must have yeah it's my pleasure you must have really enjoyed our conversation last time um <laughs> <laughs> the one that was like 20 minutes long because i got a phone call from school that was awesome yeah I know. Is everything okay? Yeah. Yeah, he's everything good. Right. We did a medication change, and, and, and the epilepsy just kind of went crazy on us. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's important to make sure to take care of first things first, right? Right. Skype interviews can wait <laughs> when your kids are in trouble. True. But you've... So you've uh, you've had some epiphanies since the last time we talked. Now, for people who don't know... Um, you're a literary consultant. You write a blog about uh, frequently asked questions to literary agents, how to find literary agents. And you're also a published author and you're working on another book. Yes. Right. Yes. Please. Okay. I had, uh, I wrote a trilogy. The first book came out last spring in 2018, book one. Uh, book two actually releases tomorrow. Um, Oh my gosh. <laughs> and book three will come out in spring of next year. Um, okay. It's sitting there needing edits really badly. Um, but, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I've been writing, I wrote two more books uh, last year, and I realized I'm writing books that I know are not going to be bestsellers. Why am I doing that? Why am I giving advice to authors and telling them, this is what to do to succeed and this is what to do to get published and yet I'm not doing those things myself and so I thought why why am I why why am I wasting yeah. time what the hell wrong with you why what? were you <laughs> what were you well okay so first off what were the two books about and what what it hits you about them you're like these are not ever going to be bestsellers well um, the first one was an apocalyptic, uh, about a girl who, um, there's a solar storm, uh, from the sun that causes a basic EMP mm -hmm. to the entire world. And this girl has got to get, uh, to Florida. Her father's an astronaut. Um, and they're, they're in like the fifth colony going to Mars for population. Okay. Um, but all the electricity's down, everything is down, except the space station had prepared ahead of time and rockets go in rocket fuel and all that other business. So right. she knows that if she doesn't get to Florida, she's in DC, if she doesn't get to Florida, by the time the shuttle takes off in like two and a half months, then she is never gonna see her father again and she's gonna be stuck here. Stranded um, on Earth. Stranded on Earth, right. And uh, so, as we and as we all know, being stranded on Earth sucks. Yes, <laughs> especially in the jungles of like Georgia, and it's not a it's jungle, right. a forest. But forest you know, she meets <laughs> she meets people, and you know, some help, some don't help, and um, it's not a bad book. the The next one was um, I love the idea of it. First off, can we talk about that for a second? I, go for it. Because I, I read another book um, where a solar flare knocked out the whole grid and um, the whole idea of the survival thing. Because it's so it seems so plausible, like how yeah. dependent we are on electricity and stuff, and how we'd all just be completely out of luck if. Oh yeah, they say if there was an EMP, ninety percent of Americans would die in the first year. Wouldn't that be wonderful? <laughs> Is it? I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> Can you make a list or I don't think people would want a list. That's <laughs> these are the people who get to stay. Can you make a list that's fantastic. You are not in ten percent. I've already have a list. No, I'm just kidding. Um 
it's but it's it's a it's a really plausible thing and i love reading stories where it's like oh my god this might happen because i when i read the book um i can't remember the name of the author i read the book i loved it because it was so like i felt like i needed to start preparing it uh-huh. gave me that urgency of like i i better get on my p's and q's about the end of the world this might happen soon yeah what was it what was it about it that you were like this isn't gonna be a bestseller I just, I guess, I guess I just didn't, A, I didn't have faith in it. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that's a big thing. You need to have faith in your own work in order to push it as far as it needs to go. Um, I just, I was telling a story and I saw myself as a storyteller, just basically relating. This is a story I know and this is how it happened. And, you know, here's Mm -hmm. the story. And then I was watching a movie um, a week or two ago, and I thought, what if I see it like a movie? Mm-hmm. What if I what if I see it like it's on a huge screen in front of me, and I'm describing what's happening around me and in front of me, and make it so big that it's just, it's, all encompassing you know those stories where you feel like you're in it yeah yeah. yeah. and i thought that is the kind of stuff that bestsellers are made out of you know the kind of stuff that people (laughs) want and feel like they're a part of and that the author believes in it was it a was it a christopher nolan movie i don't know no i doubt it what was the name do you remember the name of the movie i have no idea Okay. Um, I was just curious because <laughs> I know what you I know what you mean because you feel the atmosphere of this like everything that's going on. You literally and I, Christopher Nolan as a director is one of the best at building that with. I, so I understand what you're saying with like the music, the scenery, the the yeah. environment, all of it. Um, but building it into the story that you're writing. So was it was it with this story? It didn't feel a personal connection to you. You just had a hard time relating to it. I just. I felt like it like it got weak about three quarters of the way through and I knew yeah. it needed work, but I wasn't passionate enough about it to go back and do the work it needed yet. Mm-hmm. And I thought, oh, I'll shelf it and, you know, say I write my bestseller and then people are like, what else you got? I can say, oh, mm-hmm. well, I've got, you know, and I can go back and fix it and hopefully make it bigger and better but mm. so that takes a certain level of self-awareness to be able to look at something that you wrote personally right and say this sucks (laughs) because on some level we either say this is amazing or this is terrible we're either i feel like we're in both of those categories all the time but like having a way to uh, objectively look at it and be like okay this is not where it needs to be how did you what was that for you like how were you able to do that um that comes from agenting that comes from um having a billion queries and having having to reject 98 percent of them yeah um and having to reject a lot of good books just really good books but not great not what i needed not one revision away from publishing not um maybe with a hole in it or something you know but a good book just yeah. not there yet and that's the the main answer to, to a lot of queries uh but you can't say that to an, an author you can't you know write him a letter and go hey eh, you're just not there yet because the yeah. next question is well what you know and yeah. they don't have time to do all that because well, it's kind of almost an unexplainable thing that we're looking mm-hmm. that you're looking for, right? I mean, it's it yeah. is that connection, that atmosphere that uh, I got to read this. I got to keep. I got to find out more. Yeah, a hook. Yeah. yeah, some of them just are. You know, they're a good story, but they didn't they didn't hook me in a way that I thought this has got to be published. And I mm. I looked at my own work and I felt the same. I thought this is good, but it's not good enough. Yeah. It's not bestseller. And I thought, well, I need to give that a shot, at least so I can say I did it. I tried it, you know. I feel like I I imagine you in some sort of lab with like 
it's in a dark in a, at, at night with like lightning and thunder and you're like in this lab coat and you're taking these things and putting them together like i will have my best seller and you're like mixing these ingredients and stuff very frankenstein-esque trying to create this thing is yeah. that exactly how it worked <laughs> i kind of feel like that is well i went back to um concept yeah. concept is very important if you don't have a good concept your writing can be great, but your story's going to flop. Um, and concept Isn't that the hardest thing, though? Isn't simple, the most... yeah. But it because could be... Like, everything's been done, it feels well, like. Well, I mean, but look at, like, uh, you know, famous ones, like uh, Harry Potter. The, the premise is a uh, child of two famous wizards uh, doesn't know it and goes to wizarding school. I mean, how simple is that? But it's the book that brings that to life. Um so, I mean, you, your concept can be simple or it can be complicated, but you've got to have a concept that works and is um, relatable, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Which, to be relatable, we have to, like, <clears throat> interact with other people. Right. Um, which is difficult for some of us. I know I have struggled with this in the past. Is, um, but, like, because you have to find yourself. To, yeah. to know what's relatable because if you don't know who you are then how the heck are you going to know who anybody else is um so this this is this has obviously come through time for you i mean mm -hmm. it's not like one day I, I, I love the idea of an epiphany right like it's just magic and some and something happened but uh -huh. it's really like how many years of banging your head against the wall <laughs> like trying to you know what i mean but i would still be banging I would yeah. still be banging if I hadn't if I hadn't sat there and thought I need to I need to see it like a movie and and write it out and give it a shot. I would still yeah. be banging my head just writing good stories, writing yeah. good stories that don't go anywhere. Right. And I want to I mean, I have other things I'm interested in, too, like a voiceover narration. I'm doing some classes for that to read audio books. Um, but I'm not going to do that until Christmas when the bonus money comes. <laughs> so from now until then, yeah. So from now until then, I'm going to write this book and yeah, yeah. just do my best and put all the pieces together, like you said, concoct all the things that I know work and see if it comes to life. Do you feel like a mad scientist? Yes. Yeah. Our, so I, I want to talk about the, the, the second book. Yes. That, that you haven't, that you shelf. are putting on the shelf. Yeah. Yeah. That was one um, was called The Arrow. I'm going to steal these ideas totally. I'm taking it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm taking these. That one's about a girl who lives in a, a city in the clouds. It's uh, they're called The Arrow Dome. And it, um, it is held up by powerful magnets, basically. And it, it just kind of hovers in the air over... Um, there was uh, an asteroid that hit the Earth and caused plate shifting and volcanoes popping up mid country, mid country, and things like that. Just, but it didn't hit everywhere. So we've got patches of decent land um, in the midst of the country, and this this aerodome will fly to um, a place with good pasture, I guess. And the people who live underneath them, the surface dwellers, they call them the serfs. They, uh, they are the people who tend to the land and, and do the farming and um, basically do the grunt work for the people who live up in the city. And um, the people in the city think, well, we supply them with electricity and clean water um, because they get power from the wind and the sun and rain yeah. from, the, from the atmosphere. And um, they, they have told themselves... Uh, it's a balanced society, but it's really not. And the the girl um, who lives there is the father, is the daughter of the leader, and he's been he's been murdered. And in trying to find out who murdered her father, she goes down to where the serfs are and finds out things are not what they told her they were. And um, and in looking for the the killer, she finds a plot that. Um, 
that a chemist has to chemically alter the sit the citizens of the city and so it's a race of who can who can win first and if she can if she can get anybody to believe her that this upstanding man of society this chemist is really um a bad guy a bad guy well it started out he's trying to come up with a cure for mental illness yeah. and they come up with a with a cure that works but it also wipes your mind clean and you're highly susceptible to suggestion you're basically a sheep then you relearn how to relearn how to live and 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 do whatever you're told basically so you know mm -hmm. His idea is, well, we'll never have depression or autism or anything like that again. And and the girl says, yeah, but they'll all believe anything you say because he wants to put it in the air supply and get everybody. Give it everybody. Yeah. That so sounds so your your ideas they're like post apocalyptic science science fiction type stuff. It sounds so cool. Like I love that idea of this guy who's doing something for the greater good potentially but it's obviously evil mm -hmm. in a sense. it's because you're just wiping out people's personalities right to say that oh well you won't be depressed yeah and it's yeah. almost it's almost like you know giving people modern day drugs like mm -hmm. you know just here just take this you will be numb <laughs> you know we almost like hey, just numb yeah I mean, doctors Drinking, just do it. Drugs, because... Like here's 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 a way to numb whatever's going on. Mm -hmm. So very that's a there's a lot of deep meaning in that. And you still thought this sucks. Well, <laughs> you were like, this is terrible. Well, I thought this <laughs> needs an good. extra plot line, and I started putting the plot line in there, and then I thought, you know what, even with the extra plot line, this is gonna be good, but it's not gonna be good enough. Mm -hmm. so As an agent, I know it's not gonna be good enough. That's incredible. Um are these books these books are finished uh -huh. like or first drafts or whatever second drafts yeah yeah first second draft that's incredible i mean that kind of that that kind of um seeking to to do your absolute best like to find something that, that's in, like i'm way too lazy for that i don't know. <laughs> i'm like <laughs> I write a first draft. I'm like, this will be great. <laughs> Maybe this is That's the height so of laziness. Cool. It could. I could be at the height of laziness. Like, you know, I just don't want to mess with these books. They're not good enough. I'm only going to do the great books. I don't know. I'm only going to write bestsellers from now on. <laughs> that every author ever. Wouldn't that be a great choice, right? <laughs> Which one do you want to write? I can't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's happening. I'm excited to see it though. So, what is the? All right, are you, you share these keys a lot with on your blog and all that kind of stuff? What are are you okay sharing them now? Like, what are your keys to writing a blockbuster? Um, or is, are you keeping it a secret? I'm not. It's not a secret. I'm just not sure if I put anything into words. Um, Ooh, let's and, define this. And then you can sell it because that's. And then you become the blockbuster maker and become a billionaire. That's and you can give me like one percent of it for helping. Helping. Well, a A was concept. Concept. Okay. Concept. Mm -hmm. um, start with something that that is not uh, a hallmark of somebody trying too hard. Are too many plot lines. Yes. Really good books have simple plot line here to there, maybe a a subplot or two, but it it doesn't really vary from from the message. Yeah. Um, so uh, paring down, actually, and, and which simplified things in my brain. Um, and I thought, man, is this cheating? But no, that's really what you do. Yeah. So um, so getting your getting your concept. And I like to um, have note cards that that have a little hole in the corner that have a little ring on them. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. yeah. These kind of little mm -hmm. on a ring. Um, and I write um, little scene, little scene notes like um, anything from you know she crashes the car to King shoves the mole out for help and runs between the monster and his daughter. You know, I mean, and then I'm glad, I, you, I, I'm glad you read that because when you when you showed it to me, I thought it said King shaves his moles, and oh, I was like, awesome. what kind of 
What kind no. of book have you read? <laughs> <laughs> no, he, read. he has them all. He <laughs> sends them out. Oh. <laughs> but I like to write little bits about each scene on on a card and then go to the first one, get them all in the right order, and then go to the first one and just write that scene. If it says she crashes the car, you just write the whole scene she, where she crashes the car. Then you flip it to the next one. And if it says she goes to jail, you write that whole scene. You know, I mean, just yeah. uh, just keep flipping just keep flipping the, the cards and writing the next scene. Of course, that takes preparation. You've got to sit down and make up a scene. A scenology is what I call it. But just I write down all my scenes. This is what's going to happen. And I don't get too into detail because that's where the creative aspect comes in. That's where when I go back and I write, I add the details and the magic and the sensory words and, you know, make it a story. Yeah. But um, But I have to have the bones of it. That way I know if there's a hole later or uh, if something's implausible. I don't want to write three-fourths of a book and find out that I have a completely implausible ending. It's, it's, yeah, <laughs> it happens. It, not, oh, yeah. But if you, um, if you can find a way to get there, that's truly magical. But, yeah, you'd like to not have something that's like pff, bull crap. That's not a, right. you don't want to leave the reader like, all right, you lost me. Yeah. At yeah, the very oh, end. Yeah. And then have to toss an, and then have to toss a manuscript or or shelve yeah. a book, you know, it just it's it, it helps if you know the directions, at least the north, south, west, east directions you're gonna go. Sure. And then and then as you're writing, you get um creative with it. Okay, so I wanna um so A is concept, B is developing planning. the yeah. planning, like the blueprint. Mm-hmm. blueprint of it i want to know what this 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 book is about this blockbuster book because i love the other two ideas and what you did i hope this is i hope your book is like about how earthworms interact with people or some stupid family yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the significance yeah, the, ouch, of the earthworm don't step on me. <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's like ants um, the movie this one <laughs> This one is going to be really interesting. There's um, a boy who's, this is from a boy's perspective. This is my first time writing from a boy, so that'll be different. Um, a, a teenage boy, and he, uh, his parents tell him that they're getting a divorce, and he runs out of the house, and he goes to his friend's house, and they're walking along, and there's um, an abandoned mansion that everybody knows is there. It's been there for years or whatever. And the boy's feeling really restless and reckless. And he just says, hey, let's go check it out. You know, I heard the furniture and stuff's all still in there. Maybe we can find a treasure. So mm -hmm. they go in and they look around and they go upstairs. And they, yeah, everything's covered in sheets. It's boring. And they come back down. Uh, they got in through the kitchen. But when they come back down by the kitchen, they hear voices. And there are men in there. Um, asking some other dude, where is it? Where is it? And, you know, we know it's, we know you've got it or whatever. And they shake this guy down and, and then you hear the struggle. And then one of the guys says to the other one, don't get blood on the tile this time. And so the boys freak out and they dash into the first door they see, which happens to be a set of stairs to the basement. They can see light down there and they think maybe there's a way out. So they go down and there are a couple of tall windows on the wall and some burlap sacks in a, in a corner, like in a nest, like a squatter was there or something, and uh, some wine crates. And, uh, and they, they're like, well, maybe there's a, a closet we can hide in or that'll have some tools we can use to open the window. And there's a door under the stairs with a key in the lock. And the kid opens the door, but it opens into another basement. The only thing is, there's no house next door. Mm. So he goes through, and the bad guys, you hear one of the bad guys saying, I heard something down here. And the other one says, check it out. I'm going upstairs. And you hear the footsteps coming down. And the boy who's already through into the, into the other basement is going, come on, come on, and to his friend. And his friend's like, no, no, no. And he shuts the door. So you don't know what happens to his friend, but now you're with this guy in this other basement. And he's like, well, you know, I guess that guy will take care of himself. He's really kind of low on his morality and just kind of think about me first, 
all all for one, one for all kind of thing. Yeah. Um, all for me. <laughs> and yeah, uh, not one for all. <laughs> yeah, not for, all for me and one for me. Yeah. And yeah, he yeah. goes up. He goes up right. to the street and, or goes up, and he's in a small house. And everything he describes, everything he sees, um, and it's looked very steampunk. Mm. And uh, there, there is a lot of clockwork in this um, in this world. Uh, the world was created by a man who has a magic pen that creates clockwork life. So he created an entire world that this boy got to through this door. And the boy now needs to find his way out. Actually, he doesn't want to find his way out, but there's already a resistance in the in the world that wants to get out. And so this is to... an allegory for drugs. Am I right? <laughs> no. <laughs> this kid works. is getting high in the basement. <laughs> Whatever works. It never works, man. <laughs> I gotta be in reality. That sounds really cool. I hope so. I hope so. There's a lot. I'm finding. I'm finding there's a lot of description though, and I'm gonna have to go back and figure out what's necessary and what's not because I don't want to be too heavy on the narrative. Yeah, when you're like building the world, the mm -hmm. the clockwork world. Yeah, if you give yeah. it too much, it's like all right. Overkill. Yeah. yeah, I get it. It's a different place. Rumble shirt. <laughs> I hear you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's I, I've I've had conversations with people about that before because I think world building is such an incredible art that that if it can be done so amazingly well and you don't even feel like you're you're like watching somebody create a new world you're just kind of walking through it and you're noticing the things and that's what's really incredible I talked about an author like talking about buttons mm -hmm. and doorknobs and like what they look like and just like if you can if you can if you can just depict in a book what somebody's buttons are like um to the reader without making it sound like you're just describing buttons then you've did you've done it because mm -hmm. nobody wants to hear about buttons but <laughs> if you're reading it and you're like and you're and you notice the buttons as you're reading then you're like Whoa! This is a different place. That sounds like Chekhov's gun. If you see I've a gun, in the, if you see a gun on the mantle in the first act, it better have fired by the last act. Ah, uh, okay. Because so why is it there, right? Right, right. Yeah. So if you're describing a button, there better be a reason why the character needs to pay attention to this button. There's a lot That's... of overweight people in this world that <laughs> buttons are popping off everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> but that's part of that's part of knowing what what world building to include and what not to include is knowing what part of the world is affecting your character when and how. Yeah. And writing that. Writing so that the description becomes second place. The description yep. isn't actually where you're going. Where you're going is how this description affects the character. Yeah. So. What I've seen is a great exercise, and I don't know if you've done this before for world building, is if, you sit, if you're like sitting in your living room or just in your office or whatever, you close your eyes and you just record your, yourself describing the room, Ooh. what it looks like, the light, the color, what's around you. Because if you think about it, like, and they've done studies on this, but like the amount of data that we're taking in that's being filtered into our brain on a daily basis is an incredible amount. Oh, yeah. Like, because there's so much stuff, our brain's like, what's important? What's important? What's important? And if we can do that in, in building the world and using that exercise, you can see like how your brain is. Because you'll open your eyes and be like, oh, there's that. And I like, oh, God, <laughs> there's all this other stuff. Once you look around that you totally left out. But it wasn't. But you felt like you felt that you were in the room in your mind. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's a cool exercise. It is. I like that. I like that a lot. What do you do? What's your what's your what's your uh, mentality when you sit down to to write the world? I've heard I've heard that I do world building okay. Um, that uh, I throw in bits as I go along. Um, mm -hmm. I don't usually give a big um, 
narrative on on what the description of the of the 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 scene is like but i'll put little things like you know when she goes in she sits down in a in uh on a cracked red leather seat that you know Mm -hmm. has seen seen so much wear or whatever you know and just little throwing in little things um i was i was writing something last night and um It's, but it's in the details. It's in those small little yeah. details that, you know, things that the character notices. Um, uh, because, like you said, your brain is constantly trying to filter out information. Yeah. And, you know, but you do see things that catch your eye. And it's usually, yeah. be, there's usually some kind of meaning behind it. Sometimes it's just bright and it catches your eye. You know, yeah. those are the things that you want to really display i guess yeah yeah because there's a difference between saying i saw a tree and you know i saw an oak tree or whatever because like just that one descriptor changes the absolute image in your mind Mm -hmm. like and trying to figure out a dead tree or i i sat under the branches of a tree so large you know i you know yeah, yeah, all that stuff that that builds the the atmosphere. Mm-hmm. We were about. atmosphere. What atmosphere are you going for? Yeah, not description. Atmosphere. That's good. Atmosphere. I like I like atmosphere. <laughs> I do too. We're just changing it. That's we're it. We're just changing. Are you? What, what's the atmosphere you're going for in this book? Like, are you I, trying to teach a lesson or? I want the magical feel of like a Harry Potter kind of uh, not. Not so much with the magic, but the feel of, um, with the steampunk, they use a lot of those round bulbs that are dimmer than our light bulbs. So the, yeah. so the, the atmosphere is, is a little darker, a little grittier. Um, I have things like, uh, like automata, uh, steam powered, uh, kittens with large skulls and long necks and, 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 and legs like crab legs. But they're yeah. creepy, and wow. they kind of, and you know, they're creepy, and I have a lot of little creepy things that they that they sell in the market, and um, and just kind of want to give it that whole, um, and I haven't read Harry Potter, don't kill me, uh, so I don't know exactly, you know, you how haven't read any of the Harry Potters? I haven't. I really? haven't. I know that's bad, but. <laughs> But um, that's like if that's like the weirdest thing to hear now, because it's so it's so ingrained in the culture. Like as a 30, 33 year old man, I mean, I read it all through school when I was growing up and seeing other like 30 year old guys and girls talk about it. I'm like, come on, man. That was like <laughs> it, it feels weird when they're like, we're not kids anymore. But at the same time, it's like so ingrained. It's so popular that. Every, like every, people even have on their Twitter bios, like uh, they're in Gryffindor or Hufflepuff Ravenclaw or, or Hufflepuff. Yeah, it's like you're not yeah. a wizard. <laughs> you're not a wizard, Harry. Not a wizard, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> you're a regular person. <laughs> Absolutely. I think that's good that you haven't read it though, that you, and you want to create that same kind of same kind of magic because you're not jaded by the idea of it. Yeah, well, I like she had, you know, the, the jelly beans and the chocolate frogs and things like that. Those are tiny details that that weren't a really big deal in the book, but they added to the atmosphere and the and the mystery and the the magic and and they're also, to be honest, marketing tools that really work. I mean, not that I want people to make my creepy toys, but you know, there's potential there. <laughs> that'd be cool yeah because like there she just came out with four books based off of uh the most like the books they used in the school like Uh a history of history of magic i think and like some i can't even remember but four of the books and they're like ebooks and i'm sure they're bestsellers already because they're about the magic Mm -hmm. you know when you see people put that in their work like uh when they create stories within a story like your character's reading a novel that's not real, but like something that you created or have an idea about. That's mm-hmm. so cool. I think that's a awesome idea. Because uh, you're just like you're in you're like Inception. 
you're like dropping ideas that you think are profound into people's minds. Like, wouldn't it be cool to have this in real life? Uh huh. And then it and then it happens because we can create whatever the hell we want. Like, you know, all the sci-fi books in the past like created so much stuff in the future now because we're like that would be cool. Let's let's see if we can find a way to make that happen. You know? Yeah. I had a friend though uh, tell me because I said I wanted the magical feel of Harry Potter. She's like, you're gonna have to bite the bullet and read the books. I was like, oh come on, I don't have time for that. And she was like, no, you should. I don't know. Should I, think, I? I think you should read the books, but I think you don't need to. I think okay. you see the magic. You see that. You see what it created. That's what I'm saying. I think that's enough. You see what it's created. That you're like, oh, I get it. Without having to read the story. The stories are fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. But you don't have to read it to understand the magic that it produced. I mean, it changed an entire generation. Yeah. You know? Like, it turned an entire generation on to reading. Which is inc- which is fantastic, like so yeah. good. You don't have to read the books to understand that impact. That's true. That's yeah. true. Well, I get little things every once in a while. Like uh, one of the one of the reviews of my first book uh, the, that came out last year was um, it it's the reader crossed with Divergent with a sprinkle of Harry Potter, and I thought those things don't go together at all. Yeah. <laughs> And I haven't read Harry Potter, and I thought, and I haven't read The Reader. So I went and I read The Reader, and I still don't see it. I've never but heard The Reader. What is that about? It's a trilogy. Um, again, magic and 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 traveling. Uh, the Reader is followed <laughs> by The Speaker, and the third book is The Storyteller. And um, it's a YA fantasy that um, a girl is... The product of two powerful ma- magic wielding people and um, they both die and she's left on her own with this book she has to guard and the book tells the story of all life so you can read about yourself reading the book in the book yeah only the book only shows you what the book wants you to see when the book wants you to see it. So she can read the book and it can show her something that it wants her to do that um, that is against her plans. But she doesn't realize she's working against herself because the book has tricked her. And wow. uh, it's really, it was really interesting. I enjoyed, I enjoyed the trilogy, the whole trilogy. Um, I still don't. Still don't see how it's like my first book, but I think it's something we talked about in the beginning of the show where you talk about keeping the plot line simple. Like you don't um your idea of what you want to convey doesn't have to be cluttered and overanalyzed by seeing what everybody else has done. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I think a lot of authors talk about this. Like you have to read good books to understand what a good book is but you also have to read really crappy books to understand what you don't want to do and like you you need all the in between but Mm -hmm. to find your own voice you have to distinctly go your own way and just without being like well i need to add a giant a half giant in my book because that wasn't harry potter and people (laughs) love that guy you know like not i think that's like lending to the authenticity the relatability of you as the author and how you connect, connect with your audience that I don't think they they teach a lot to other to writers. Yeah, you know? um, it's like finding your voice. Yeah, yeah, and I uh, I don't remember I don't remember what I said, but I wrote a post about finding your voice on my blog. <laughs> I have no it was idea what I said. Super good. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so because I'm gonna go look now. Isn't that something though? We write so much and we talk so much, like. Like half of the stuff we talk and write, we're just like I don't remember. What the hell oh was. yeah, they, I I spoke I spoke uh, Wednesday no Tuesday night at a panel um, for for authors at a at a library, and yeah. uh, I they gave us questions ahead of time, and I knew there was no way once I got in front of all those people I was going to remember my train of thought. So I wrote yeah. all of my notes down, and that, but then I didn't want to read them, so I left them aside and Mm -hmm. lo and behold i've got the microphone and i'm talking on a bunny trail 
and completely lose where I was going with it. Probably three I, times. Absolutely. Oh, was that's awful. what happens. That's what happens, though. Yeah. But I think I think when you when you do find your voice, I think the true message of what you're trying to say always comes out. Because there's something to the heart of you that needs to come out, and you find a way to get there. And that's what I think true storytelling is. It's like you have no clue how you're going to get there, but you find a way because that's who you are. You yeah. find a way to make it there. You know? Yeah, and you follow the character. A... Yeah. Of course, the character exactly. is, is a lot of times a part of you in some way, um, mm -hmm. either... Uh, by your beliefs or your personality or something. I mean, sometimes you write somebody completely opposite of you, but it, it's easier to write somebody that has a little something to do with you because then you understand the decisions that they make and yeah. why they make them. And um, Yeah. Sorry, there's noise here. <laughs> I was, I was going to ask, are those your kids or just some random... <laughs> Mine, I have, okay. I have five, but Hi, I have... Random. Hey, hey what's here. up, random kid? No, just... <laughs> That's awesome. Um, hey. Yeah, so so in, in terms of um, the blockbuster stuff, like yes. getting writing the book, so we got the idea, we've got the plot and all that kind of stuff. What else are you... Because isn't a lot of it marketing the actual story and like finding the right publisher the right literary agent and this kind of goes into what we were talking about before too like most frequently asked questions and why are they frequently asked like what are people not understanding that's what that's what i always get I'm like what are you not understanding about this <laughs> this the, is the biggest question i get even though i'm not an agent anymore is would you take this book um and sometimes it's is it sometimes they're asking is it good enough or not but a lot of times they're asking is this concept okay and i can tell you if a concept is it, you know will work or not but i can't tell you if your book will because i have read it um but sometimes they'll say things like would you take a ya novel with no romance well somebody will right. in fact there's an agent who will take probably whatever you've written you just have to find them right and you have have to have written a book that's good enough or, or just that's great. You have got to have written a book that's great and um, great books get published. They find the right they find the right person. And uh, when you find the right person, you get published. And um, it's like uh, J.K. Rowling said she was rejected. I don't remember how many times, like but 12 times or something. Yeah. Yeah, not a not an exorbitant amount, but uh, but yeah, she was rejected because she had to find the right agent, and not everybody is going to take what you've written, but somebody will. And if you look on places like uh, Manuscript Wishlist uh, dot com, uh, agents have profiles, and they'll write on there just exactly what they're looking for or what they want. Um, and you can see if that's what you've written or not. But if you're looking for an idea of a blockbuster to write, you can search on there and see somebody will say, oh, I want Robin Hood in space. And you can be like, oh, great idea. I got that. I got that, <laughs> right? And then you write it and you know somebody already who wants it. And that's the person you send it to. But I, so mean, I, think, I think you're touching on something that's at the heart of what we've been talking about all along. I think for a lot of writers um for me especially me especially because i'm i'm all about me um <laughs> like valid like spit my coffee <laughs> oh my god it's my dream i want to make everyone who comes on the show spit whatever they're drinking out <laughs> i used to do it all the time to my friends and it was just the highlight of my day um <laughs> you win yeah yeah <laughs> did it uh we want validation over uh, even if we obviously getting the deal would be extreme validation, but mm -hmm. if we don't get the deal, we still want to know, well, am I on to something like, does this, mm -hmm. because trying to believe in yourself is one of the hardest things I've found you, a person can do in life. Cause there's always people outside of you that'll be like, I believe you can do whatever you want. I mean, there's always those people who see it 
if you can see it in yourself and believe in your own idea and you find your voice and you're like, I know this is a great story no matter what, we stop asking for validation Mm -hmm. and we don't worry about the, well, is it good? Do you think it's good? It's just, okay, it wasn't for you. Yeah. And that's what I'm trying to do with this, with this one. I want to put out something that I believe in, that I stand behind, that I think this is great. And if you don't publish it, you're silly. And if they say no, then I, okay, well, I'm going to find somebody who will. Um, but it's completely different than handing them something that I, a story that I've, I've made that I, I hope is good enough that I, I hope somebody else will like that. You know, I, I believe is a good story, but I don't believe in it as a driving force, I guess. And, you know, and I'm not offering it to say, would you please, please like this? I'm, you know, I'm offering it saying, here's what I have. I think it's great. I hope you think it's great too. And it it just, it changes something in you to where um, the rejections don't hurt so bad. Yeah. You understand that it's not personal, it's subjective. And I used to have to, I hated rejecting people, but yeah. I, it, it was part of the, it was part of the job, but I would have people, uh, I would put exactly what I'm looking for and I would have people send me like a turtle picture book. Okay. That's really sweet, but I, I don't do that. Yeah. I, it's not your genre. Yeah, it's not my genre. I don't do picture books. I've never done one. I could probably do one if I had the passion for it, but I I just had never done one. And so that person is going to get an automatic rejection. And and, and face it, every rejection hurts. Every rejection hurts. So I've just had to reject some poor person. This poor person has had to receive my rejection because they didn't do enough homework. Yeah. They didn't look to see, is this something she even takes? Right. Um, and, and, they, and so I think authors sometimes unnecessarily hurt themselves in the querying process. Um, yeah. And the other thing I want to do is, is shed light on the whole process. It's really not that hard. It's just scary. It's dark yeah. and it's mysterious and it's subjective. And that makes it scary. And I just want authors to realize it's, you know, what what's in your control, what's not in your control, what you need to do, and 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 yeah. like to let go. Yeah, anything important in life is is got some fear to it because you know, I mean, you're you know that this is big. You know, you have you have that feeling like this is big. Like if this hits, it's, it's something, it'll change my life in some certain way. And there's that fear, like, but if it doesn't, then what do I do? You know, cause mm-hmm. that's scary. And what yeah. do I do now? I thought I was going to be a writer, but nobody wants me to write. You know, it's it with this book. Um, it will have been hopefully my best or the best I've put, out so far and if nobody likes it i don't know what my plan is after that (laughs) but but i think you figure out and i think in the process of writing it and trying it you figure you learn so much about yourself yeah and you realize that it's never about that somebody saying oh i love that or i hate that or whatever it's about what you've discovered about yourself in the process because you change ultimately through trying to create something Mm -hmm. you know which i think that's the magic of writing more than anything else is the person you become in the process of writing a story yeah and the more you write the better you get i mean you know keep writing every time you shelf shelf a book you've learned something you know yeah every time i every time i write a book i learn i i focus on something else like uh, you know focusing on voice or focusing on punctuation or focusing on you know in editing you, you there's there's always something that that really stands out and once mm-hmm. you learn it then the next time you write you kind of see it coming does that make sense and yeah. what, to where what you can fix things as you're writing, you don't have to go back and edit it next time because you've learned it. Right. That makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it's, it, 
it is i know we say it all the time on the show but it's it's just a lifelong journey if you want to write don't ever stop no because you get rejected i get that question a lot when should i stop when should i throw in the towel and i'm like never yeah if that's your goal if your goal is to be published edit and send edit and send edit and send until you get there yeah well, anyone, any, anyone whose goal is to get into writing because they want to become a millionaire or whatever, or like be a billion, like that's silly. <laughs> yeah. If your goal is to tell stories, never stop writing. Right. If you want to become a millionaire, get a job and learn how to save your money. It's much easier. Yeah. <laughs> it's much easier. Invest in Apple or something. Yeah. 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 Don't like it's much easier than like <laughs> writing. Because yeah. writing is difficult. You have to. You really have to dig deep. I think. Yeah. Blood, sweat, and I'm, tears. That's yeah. I'm excited to to read all. I think all those stories have a ton of merit to them. Um, they're really cool ideas. Thank they you. Seem like they'd be a lot of fun to read. Well, hopefully my my bestseller will best sell, and then everybody will be like, "Hey, what else you got?" And I'll be yeah. like, "Ah, yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> all my awesome. stories." All your stories. So when um, you're you're actively finishing this, or like in the in the meat of it right now? I'm in the meat of. Well, I started it yesterday, and I already have about nine thousand words. So, I once I get going, I'm I'm pretty fast. My first book I wrote in two and a half weeks, and the second yeah. one I wrote in the next two and a half weeks, yeah. and then the third one took me like a year. I it's, I don't it's, know. It's funny. I did the exact same thing with my first. Uh, three books they each took three and a half weeks yeah. um it's it's weird like once you get that idea if you have the time to just i got nothing else to do might as well sit here and write it it's nice yeah. when it flows like that it doesn't always flow like that right well i find if you're getting bored with your story your reader is going to get bored with your story so yes so if you start yes. getting bored, go make a cup of coffee and come back with fresh eyes because you need to go some other direction i will say this one of my, and I think I did a good job on my second book, but I will say this about it. Every time I started getting bored, I was like, oh, we got to spice it up. What can I blow up? <laughs> it's just, uh -huh. like, it's just like blowing stuff up or killing people. You know, got to keep it. Got to keep it and going. When, when you do, are you, I, I, you do a lot of structure, but like as a pantser, trying to figure out like, well, you just kill, killed these people. But those, are, those are your main characters. How are you? <laughs> like, yeah. What are you gonna? How are you gonna get around that one, dummy? Yeah. But try. But finding it's fun. Like, okay, we we can be creative. How do we get around killing our main characters? <laughs> uh, uh, in I heaven, did it, uh, I did. they drive fast cars. I don't know. They drive fast cars. That's like the Fast and Furious version of my story. <laughs> <laughs> drive fast cars in heaven it's great um all right so we've gone about 53 minutes i want to know your parting words most most critical information that you've learned and how long well how long have you been writing for how long now oh i don't know i've been writing my whole life i did that whole obligatory high school dark poetry phase and uh you know I don't think I wrote a lot when my kids were little. But... I am a trash can. <laughs> <laughs> my life is garbage, man. The wind blows <laughs> my pages around. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a fun phase. Yeah. But I... Um, so, so besides never stop writing, what have you, what have you learned? Hmm. So much stuff um i would just go with the whole don't give it up if it's not working talk to someone have a beta mm -hmm. find a beta find someone who will tell you at any phase of the writing game the truth from concept yeah to finish draft who will tell you honestly are you wasting your time mm. um because it's it's hard to know it's hard to know yourself 
if what you're writing is just good or great or um, um, if it's hooky or not. Um, I think having somebody, having a group is even better, like a writing group. If you're not in a writer's group, you should be in a writer's group. If you're trying to write, if mm -hmm. you're trying to write a book, you need to be part of a group. A, they can help you brainstorm, um, talk through problems with you. Uh, you can discuss your concept and your, your, your outline. Say, do you see plausibility here? Do you see holes here? Do, you know, and then when you start writing the meat of it, they can read snippets and say, you know, how's my voice? How is, mm -hmm. how does this, can I pull this synopsis off? You know, um, yeah. because you, you've got to have that support. And, and then when it comes time to querying, you know, if you are writing with a group of people, you're all, you're all querying. You're yeah. all, you're going through the journey together and can build each other up can you know help each other down um i just say community community we sharpen each other right 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 iron sharpens iron and uh, i think one of the things i said earlier when you were talking about your stories i said i was going to steal all these ideas i think <laughs> i think that's something that can uh scare writers off from sharing their their work with other people yes. ideas are a dime a dozen and i and, Nobody, and everything's been done Everything's everything, been done. Everything under the sun has been done. And we want to think in our little author brains that since it came directly, uniquely from my brain, it is unique. It is yeah. so not because yeah. all our brains work very similarly. Yeah. That's why people have so many. That's why so many people love Coke and so many people love Pepsi. It's just, right. you know. Yeah. And it's, but nobody can steal your authentic voice. Like, if, as long as you, it, most people aren't even going to write the dang story. Right. You know? if, or if they do, they take it in a way you never would. They will not write the same book you will write. If you never. give two people, if you give two people the same concept, you're not going to get two books identical. Yeah. You're just not. Yeah. And Otherwise, I, I would about, be afraid. Right. Yeah. I love that about writing. Um, I started doing comedy too. I love that about, because, the joke premises have no, haven't changed over hundreds of like it's relationships, sex, all this kind of stuff. And th those premises haven't changed, but the people telling the jokes have, and it's been new material for hundreds of years, you know, mm -hmm. because we're all, it's like we can figure out how we filter the world and just express that honestly. And as long as it's, you know, interesting, then we'll have, we'll find a, we'll find a group of people who want to, want to read it, you know, they yeah. relate to it. Yeah. yeah. And if it's you know you've got readers, then, you know, you'll find that you'll find an agent or you you can self publish and know who your readers are and know who to market to. Um, yeah. It's it's all what do you want to do with it? Yeah, very true. Such wonderful information, Jennifer. Jennifer. Thank you, my son. <laughs> we had such a great time talking today. <laughs> I got to work on my accents for sure. Do you <laughs> do New York? Do you do hey. New York and drink some coffee? Nobody talks to me like that, eh? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I, I can do the backyard, uh, the Boston. Get out of my backyard. This is... <laughs> yeah. backyard. That one I can't do. No, Boston. Anyway, we can do accents all day long. Thank you so much for coming on the show. <laughs> Thank you for having me again. My as always absolutely um i'll put links to the, in the description to your website where people can find you and your blog and uh your new book is coming out tomorrow well yep. when this airs it'll already be out um what's the name of that book we didn't even talk about the name of that book <laughs> the queen's heart the queen's heart make sure you go out and buy the queen's heart available now link will be in the description of the video jennifer thank you so much thank you have a good day. You too. Bye. Bye.